The movie starts with a scary scene of people drowning. There seems to be no help around. A girl floats up from the water and comes to her senses. She is drenched with blood and looks around. The girl, Tommy, searches for Richard, her crewmate of sorts. She's trapped in her sailing boat and desperately searches for a way out. She finally manages to get out to find out she's stuck in the middle of the Pacific Ocean with her boat dwindling from side to side. She screams out in pain to see she's the only one who has survived the terrifying hurricane. In a flashback, the year is 1983 and Tommy is seen walking around a dock. She's in Tahiti and tells the guard that she's just a traveler who picks up any job that can get her to the next place and has no final destination whatsoever. She gets a job to clean the boats there and tell her co-worker she's from California and doesn't want to go home just yet. She exclaims the wind brought her here and would stay in Tahiti for a while. She's on a journey to see the whole world. Tommy rides the waves and explores the ocean and she loves doing so. Just then, another boat pulls up and Tommy helps dock the boat. The man on the boat introduces himself as Richard. Richard is instantly attracted to Tommy and Tommy is intrigued by Richard as well. Tommy helps Richard in his chores and that's how they start their conversation. Richard grabs the opportunity to ask Tommy on a date and Tommy agrees. Richard tells her about all the places he's traveled and Tommy is fascinated by him. They commence their small date and Richard tells about the dreadful ocean which seems beautiful but encompasses lots of fearful things. They soon realize they share very similar thoughts and aspirations. Richard tells her that even though the ocean gets scary sometimes, it also makes him feel as though he's reborn and enlightened. Richard proposes they take his boat and go sailing for a while and Tommy gets excited. They cut through the waves as the wind caresses their face. Back in the present, Tommy screams out to Richard and tries her hardest to look for him, from her overturned boat. She even calls out for help on the radio but no one hears her distress calls. She gets extremely anxious when no one answers. She looks around for Richard, who's now her fiancé, while crying out for him. In another flashback, Tommy and Richard go on a trail hike. They come across a deep river and Tommy jumps in without a second thought. Richard dives in right after and finds Tommy meditating at the bottom of the river. They come up to the surface and cheer. They have loads of fun and Richard confesses he likes her. They get closer and closer as they spend more time in each other's company. Soon, they fall madly in love. At present, Tommy reminisces all the time she's spent with Richard as she is only half conscious. She soon spots something and tries to sail towards it but the boat is completely broken. She tries her hardest to fix the boat but falls into the water in the process. The boat starts to float away but she quickly swims towards it. She finally climbs up after much difficulty and starts repairing the boat. She gets the water off the boat and fixes it to the best of her abilities. Almost five months ago, it shows Tommy and Richard in love. Richard has a board full of Tommy's Polaroids. He even hands her a present as a sign of love. But now, Tommy is all alone and Richard is lost. She's already out of drinking water and food. Tommy uses her binoculars to find Richard and finally spots him. She saves him and takes him back to the boat. Richard isn't conscious so Tommy drags him back and they land on the boat. Richard's foot is severely injured and Tommy tries her hardest to cure him. We go back to their budding relationship once again where the two of them just enjoy each other's company and walk through a market and Richard tucks flowers behind her ears. Tommy tells him about how her mother was only 15 when Tommy was born. At dinner, they talk about their most beautiful memories. They dance with each other and spend the night in each other's arms. Richard asks Tommy if she'd travel the world with him and Tommy happily agrees. Once again, we're in the present where Tommy treats Richard's wounded leg. She then finds out even his ribs are broken. He's in a lot of pain and they're stranded in the middle of the ocean. Before their sailing journey, Tommy and Richard go shopping and suddenly meet Richard's friends. All of them go grab a coffee and at the cafe, his friends tell him they're going back to London and ask Richard if he's interested in taking their boat, the Hazana, back to California. They even offer to pay $10,000 and a first-class ticket back to London once he arrives in California. Tommy listens in but isn't very ecstatic to go back to her hometown which is in San Diego, California. Richard accepts the offer, on the condition that Tommy comes along and that they also give her a return ticket. His friends ask him to set sail no later than next week. Back in the present, Tommy and Richard try to find their way back. Richard assures her she can do it. They find themselves in a very difficult place and can't seem to get back to the right sailing path. Tommy is convinced they're gonna die as no one comes that far up north to even notice them. But Richard tells her not to be sorry and something good will surely come up. Right before they set sail, Richard notices Tommy's dilemma. Tommy tells him she doesn't want to go home just yet. Richard replies saying that he wouldn't go either if it meant staying with her. He adds he sailed half the world to find her and wouldn't just let her go. Now, Tommy and Richard look for ways to go back home. They realize it's impossible to sail to San Diego and instead plan to go to Hawaii which happens to be a very dangerous and deadly path. They start sailing and are in the middle of nowhere. Once again in a flashback, we see Tommy and Richard at the Hazano with his friends. They share drinks and Tommy takes a tour of the whole boat which is magnificent. Tommy and Richard's friends leave soon after so the two can spend some time alone. They flirt for a while and Tommy proceeds to write a letter to her mom while we see her presently, suturing her wound on her own. 
She tells her mother she'll be back before Halloween. She talks about Richard and how she loves him in the letter. Back to the present, Tommy and Richard search for food and find a small amount to consume. They also find a tank of water. They eat peanut butter together and relish its smoothness. Tommy reminisces their old memories where the two talk about each other and make each other laugh. After about five days adrift, Tommy and Richard are finding it difficult to stay in course. Both of them are starving and stranded so they start arguing. Tommy dives underwater and tries to pull out a cloth stuck to the boat. She pulls it out and goes back to sailing. It's 10 days adrift now and Richard's wounds are worse than before. Tommy doesn't tell him that and continues treating him. Richard tries his hardest to tolerate the pain. They're almost out of food and water. Tommy doesn't want to hunt for fish as she's vegetarian but she has to do to the shortage. Even then, it's too hard and she gives up. Almost 18 days adrift, Tommy finds beer and other foods hidden underneath some furniture. They both are ecstatic and have a mini party. They're both dehydrated and have no hope left whatsoever. Richard tells her he hopes he never met her as he didn't want her to go through this mess. But Tommy just replies she wouldn't trade her experience and Richard's love for anything. At the start of their sailing process, Tommy asks Richard about his mother's death and he says she hung herself when he was just seven. Tommy is shocked to hear this. He tells her that he misses her a lot. He suddenly proposes to Tommy with a handmade ring and she gladly accepts. Almost 29 days adrift and Tommy sees a large cargo ship heading straight for Hazana and fires multiple flares, but the ship sails on past them. Tommy wonders if she has been hallucinating. She starts to cry out thinking they're gonna die in the water. Tommy completely loses hope. Richard begins to suffer from a high fever. Tommy tries to keep him awake so as to not let him die. In the flashback, Tommy and Richard find out about a storm coming their way on the radio as they're sailing. They decide to change their course and secure everything in place. Almost at 33 days adrift, Richard tells her another storm might be hitting soon. Richard's fever gets worse. At the beginning when the storm hits, we see Tommy and Richard prepping the boat but failing due to the high tides. Now at present, it's over a month that they've been adrift and Richard's condition worsens. Tommy tries to distract him by telling him her childhood stories. At the storm, Richard tells Tommy that they should try going under the waves as they're too high. The storm gets worse and Richard tells Tommy he loves her and the possibility of them drowning increases. Richard tells Tommy to get below the ship but Tommy refuses to leave his side. A ginormous wave comes crashing and Richard forces Tommy to get under the boat. The wave hits and Richard falls into the water as the boat collapses. His head collides with the pipe and he falls into the depths of the ocean. At present, Tommy professes her love to Richard and we finally find out. All this time Tommy was hallucinating. Richard was never there. She finally realizes that she never saved Richard. She tears up as she finds out Richard is gone forever and she has to find her way back home alone. She hunts fishes and does all the sailing. Finally, at 41 days adrift, Tommy finds land and a Japanese research vessel in the distance. She fires off two flares, successfully attracting its attention. The vessel lowers food and water supplies to Tommy and tows Hizana to shore. Tommy returns to Tahiti after recovering and visits Richard's boat, bursting into tears after seeing the photos of Richard and herself. She goes to the beach with a frangipani flower, places her engagement ring around the flower, and lets it go in the water. Richard was claimed to be dead and his body was never found. Tommy, to this day as well, hasn't stopped sailing or loving Richard.